Well, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome, welcome today to Zycell's Tech Talk. My name is Trig Nguyen. I am one of the product managers and sales managers here at Zycell in, uh, based in Anaheim, California. We have some um, just not sunny skies today, a little bit overcast, but usually it's it's been sunny this entire week. Hopefully wherever you're at, uh, it's been uh, it's been nice, but I heard it's been pretty cold. So just a quick of hand, show of hands, if you can hear me fine, um, just uh, raise your hand there, just so I know that I guess everything is working and I'm just not muted or something like that. Thank you, Paul, Peter, Josh, appreciate it. Well, today we get to talk about a few things, um, primarily what is new in ZLD 4.70 in our switches. Um, but we like to do this as a, um, an interactive time um, let's see, Haiti says voice is not clear. Anybody else think that the voice is not clear? Is it too loud? Is it too soft? Uh, or am I talking too loudly? Do I need to turn it down? I thought it was okay, but I, I could be wrong, depending on where your what your settings are. Um, okay, but here, on we like to have it interactive. So just like that, um, feel free to use the chat, use the Q&A session to, um, you know, send me some uh, questions, anything you would like for me to answer uh, in, in line with what I'm presenting. And it would be a great for, again, just have that interaction with you. So we are, let's see, it says voice is choppy. Anybody else experiencing choppiness, by the way? Can somebody um, send me a chat message if somebody else? Now, Peter says it's soft on the volume. Okay, so let me see. Let me see if I could turn it up a little bit. I have it on auto. I listened to it myself on through the the live stream itself, but it seemed okay. Um, hmm, I don't know. Maybe is it is it turned up all the way? I guess it turned off halfway. Usually I have it turned up. Raymond says it sounds okay. All right, so maybe I don't know. Maybe it's the connectivity. Um, but we are hey, we are remote, so this is how this is how it works. Maybe. Um, it will clear things up uh, as we go along. But let me just go ahead and continue. If nobody else has any problems, um, then um, we will uh, try to do that. If you have any future problems, uh, you can always, if you have still problems there, you can still watch the, the recording. We'll have this posted as well. But thank you for being here. Appreciate um, you spending the time over the next uh, 30 minutes or so and, and us covering through what's, what's new. So first I wanna just do a quick order of business Zycel Communications, actually Zycel Networks now, we've been in operation for the last 30 years. Uh, primarily we've been, um, uh, our headquarters is in where we do a lot of our manufacturing and our design is in uh, overseas in Taiwan. We have 100 million devices creating global connections with 600 passionate employees worldwide. 700,000 businesses use our solutions to power up their businesses, businesses in 150 markets uh, globally as well. Internationally recognized globally for our innovation to design and continue to, to, to pile on some additional awards, uh, CRN awards that are being announced um, this quarter uh, as well. We also have been certified with ICSA labs <clears throat> continuously for the last 20 years. We're only one of the few vendors who actually have this distinction. I think there's only five vendors who ever have had this uh, distinction. We are solutions driven <clears throat> by our clients needs. So you as partners and your clients can work with us in helping us to drive what kind of solutions you're looking for so we can understand what your clients needs, what you need in order to, to, to do business easier, uh, to manage your networks, any of that feedback you can directly provide to us because we do have our own R&D facilities so that we can write our, uh, we write our firmware, we can update and add features or even add uh, feature products um, and solutions to that for you know, addressing different vertical markets um, and, and really get providing an end-to-end -end solution. A comprehensive portfolio, end-to-end, -end, like I mentioned, security appliances, wireless solutions, switching networks with fiber, uh, 10 gig uh, specialized CCTV switches, gateway access solutions like hotspot, if you're looking to have guest network access, or network management solutions, both in the cloud and standalone op uh, options as well. So today we are bringing some powerful and scalable solutions from the switching side of things. And that's the topic for today. We wanna to be able to make sure that you are, 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 are enabled with uh, knowing that their switch network, the switch networks and that are in the networks today are very important to providing a, a, a positive and a, a, a 
a, a very strong backbone to your solutions. Some people, you know, know that wireless is kind of the big application. Everything is wirelessly connected, and because of the convenience, because of the coverage, because the uh, you know you don't have to run wires to those locations. But still, with every um, every solution, whether it be PoE, whether it be wireless or cameras, they all need to be powered by a switch network. And that backbone is what really makes um, for a, a reliable and efficient um, delivery of that traffic. So if you if you kind of don't pay attention to the the switch network itself, that could be a cause for for many issues. And you know things like how the traffic moves, either uh, overflows or too many packets are going certain places, or the wrong uh, the wrong packets are going to different ports where you might have a a storm, a broadcast storm. Uh, certain security functions that are also required or that you don't think about typically in a switch network that has to come into play when you're dealing with VLANs, you're dealing with QoS, you, um, um, you know, you just really have to have a, um, you know, just a way to deliver that kind of network. So Zynos 4.70 is just a a uh, firmware that we've released into our switch network. So these are some of the models that have that and certain features that are kind of, uh, uh, let's say, specialty or uh, uh, for each one of these kinds of switches. So the surveillance switches like the 1350 series provides a surveillance mode, um, IP camera mode, because they are uh, specifically for IP cameras. There are other features like our new GS2220, which is what we're going to be uh, kind of focusing on today, provides a, a, a big layer of, of functionalities and features in the supported models. We've expanded to also the 1920s, the XS3800s, the, the XGS2210s, and the 4600s as well. So different feature functions be based on whether the switch is just a layer two switch, a fully layer two managed, or if it is a you know fiber type switch or layer three plus managed. Some of those feature sets are reserved for those kinds of switches. So just kind of keep track of what is available for whatever application you're doing. Um, but some of the features that have been added in 4.70 include surveillance mode uh, on 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 if um, on Viv uh, support for IP cameras to detecting those um, IP cameras. Auto PD recovery is a feature that we'll talk about today. Uh, a network AV mode. So really focused on network AV solutions is one of the big features that it, that's in 4.70, uh, part of the 2220s and will be released in, in other modes soon, uh, and other uh, switches as well. Standard routing licenses uh, are going to be available for uh, RIP OSPF, uh, doing layer three, almost layer four uh, type applications in our X, uh, XS3800s, guest VLAN MAC authentication, IGMP enhancement for VoIP again, or, or sorry, yeah, uh, uh, AV over IP solutions, DHCP server guard to protect again network uh, solutions. That helps for you to um, ensure that there are no other DHCP products, um, uh, maybe firewalls that are pro producing DHCP through your network that's that's not allowed. So uh, certain uh, you don't want somebody to accidentally plug in. This is very helpful in maybe a MDU a uh, you know, hospitality where somebody may bring their own private router or personal router and plug it into your network, you don't want that to become the DHCP and try to provide um, IP information to everybody else. So that that's very helpful to be able to block that. Again, these are some of the things that you don't typically think about when you're deploying a network for maybe your office, but when you're deploying it for a more public solution where you might have a guest network access, um, things like that, you, you have to take these into account how people could accidentally, you know, even, um, you know, not intending to be malicious or anything, but plug themselves in, in a, you know, in kind of a bad way so that it can um, definitely make a, you know, issues within your network. Uh, Paul, Paul asked, did, where can we get copies of the slides? So, well, I'll have it posted available in our, our partner pro, uh, portal, along with a link maybe to um, in the YouTube video there, Paul, when we release this video. So I should be able to get that. If you don't see it, um, you can always send me an email at the end and I will get this slide to you. Um, vendor ID based VLAN. So we can actually allow for you to put different vendor IDs or use the vendor IDs based on their MAC address information and those octets that identify who is that unique vendor. We can actually see, hey, these are the uh, voice over IP um, devices 
And based on those, we can add automatically put them onto a VLAN. So you no longer have to worry about uh, putting in every MAC address of every device to make sure that it goes into the voice VLAN, for example. So we have vendor-based VLAN capabilities, multicast load sharing over to the trunk port. And all that means is we, we're able to handle the traffic when you have multiple maybe link aggregation ports, uh, be able to parse those um, traffics between them a lot better. Uh, and to make it more efficient. And that's very helpful for uh, actually the, the voice, uh, sorry, the audio, video, the AV over IP solutions that we'll talk about. Uh, large link ad groups up to 48 for stacking. So you can stack 48 ports together to make a giant trunk if you wanted to link ag them together. Um, authentication for better security. Voice VLAN with um, LLDP MED. So it, again, it can detect this is a solution that allows for you to detect a device's IP or a voice IP behind um, even the, or the device IP behind a voice phone. So typically you have like a pass through port and um, one challenge is if you have a computer that's directly plugged into the pass through port for the LAN, um, the device, it's, it's hard to detect basically. You see the IP address of the, the phone itself and you can't differentiate the phone from the device itself. So you can't split them out from a VLAN perspective. But here with this new feature that we've added, the LLDP uh, MED allows for you to actually detect all of that. Display client IP address information also in Nebula without having to use like a firewall. Before that was one of the limitations that we kind of uh, had an issue with in Nebula itself. Nebula is our cloud platform and it uh, you, could, you couldn't see like that device's IP address directly unless you actually had a firewall in that solution to detect it. But we've worked our way around it and provide that out with a, a 4.70. So one of the features that is a key feature here in 4.70 that we've added that typically was in our uh, IP surveillance camera switches is the auto device recovery. Um, primarily used uh, initially for a camera um, but being able to use it for pretty much any device. So it's an auto PD recovery, meaning the switch can detect, let's say for example, a camera can detect when the camera has either some sort of failure or some sort of uh, maybe pause in the traffic or maybe it's not responding. And typically when you have anything that goes down, uh, the first thing of troubleshooting, that's like troubleshooting 101, not even 101, it is uh, just reboot the device, right? That's the first thing we wanna do. But in these cases, when you have a camera or an access point or something else. If there's some sort of um, you know, frozen device, it's not very easy for uh, you know, uh, management or if you being the managing VAR, the managed service provider, or even to ask the customer to go find that access point or find that camera to reboot. Now with auto device recovery, you're actually able to detect using LLDP. You can use ping uh, within the device to figure out is this device really down? It has some thresholds that you can set. And then you can also set it so it doesn't just continuously reboot. So there's a lot of settings there. It can send you an alarm when, when, it, when it triggers um, that something is detected as down. And then it will do a power cycle and um, ensures things like uh, even to discharge the power, power. So we've added a lot of features. We've worked with some partners to say, hey, what is important, especially for cameras, uh, how to do a reboot and do it you know, nicely. Um, you know, most of the time when we do power cycles, we unplug it, we wait 10 seconds for everything to discharge, then we plug it back in. This is the same effect. We actually can set that discharge. We can actually set that, that timer and then also check how many times we should reboot how often the failing should happen before we try a reboot. All of those things uh, are all settable in this. So it's really helpful. Uh, and we know that a lot of times, probably 99% of the time when you reboot the device, it comes back on, everything is good, uh, ready to go. So this being able to detect it, you could just get an alarm. You'll know that it was down. And then um, probably by the time you actually can log in to, to get it, the, the device may have already been rebooted and um, has already come back online. So the customer doesn't necessarily even realize that something may have even gone down, but you have an alert. You can then go and check out, do some uh, troubleshooting to make sure everything is, is working correctly uh, and maybe take action from there. Now, of course, if it's tried a, a few reboots um, and uh, it can't get that uh, going again, then of course you can go out there finally and, and do a, a visual check yourself. But that's really helpful uh, in order to do all that. So AV over IP, um, being able to use these devices with the 4.70, uh, ZLD 4.7 uh, firmware 
allows for you to do things like um, AV, uh, AV over IP and to be able to simplify the process. Some of the challenges is that the future of AV is just be able to make things work faster. There are more and more audio visuals, uh, video systems that are transforming the media today. So there's a lot of connectivities. Uh, a lot of them are standard IP based now. Uh, and so that brings uh, AV uh, network kind of solution providers into the networking side as well. They're able, they're trying to, um, you know, get a, a lot of partners are trying to move into that to, to provide a reliable switch network so that the um, AV content that's being delivered, whether it be uh, maybe like shows or whatever, but or also could be camera um, connectivity. Um, it could be a broadcast within the stadium, like or a live feed. All of that requires um, some sort of network. And now everything has moved to uh, IP based, making it easier for you to transfer. There's a lot of um, things from a networking perspective side that some of these AV um, you know technicians may not know because it's a very steep learning curve, I think for moving from like an AV industry to going into IP based networks. Typically in those, um, you know, AV before you just had a switch that was provided with the solution, you just plug them in and they were just a very kind of closed system. They only managed and they were only configured for just that function. But now because it is IP based, a lot of the network um, uh, applications come into where uh, they're being asked to also provide, can you provide guest network access? Can you provide uh, VLAN services for a private network and a public network? And being able to separate all of that and be able to make sure that the AV over IP is working smoothly um, so that you have your settings for IGMP and those parameters are set up correctly. Um, and if you don't do it, you can have a problematic uh, video streaming issues and the performance you might have like artification and um, screens not working correctly. So it, it, it's very obvious, you know, when you have a, uh, a screen or something like that, that doesn't function right. So we want to provide a simplified approach. Uh, how do how does ZineCell provide an easy way um, using our technologies, using our expertise on how to configure these um, types of applications or how to configure these? We've been working with hospitality in delivering, you know, IGMP type solutions uh, to set top boxes, uh, video over the switch network, um, doing triple play with voice video and data uh, on our switch layer networks to provide that to the hospitality. So they're doing their voice, they're doing their uh, IPTV to, um, to the screens to provide all that. So we have a lot of understanding on that in our projects and stuff we've been working on uh, throughout the years. So we're looking at trying to improve. How do we improve um, AV over IP? We want to improve the ease of use and deployment and how to use it, how to manage it from a partner perspective. Uh, we want to be able to reduce the lag in the voice in the picture because that could be caused by the network. Those are obvious things when people are watching a, a TV screen. If the audio is off and versus who's talking or whatever's on the screen, it is very a very noticeable thing. Even if it's just a few milliseconds of you know, difference, you can actually see that lag. We want to be able to remove any kind of uh, freezing pixelation that could be caused by the network, any kind of hanging screens where um, you know as you're changing either channels or changing the stream to another device um, to another picture, uh, we don't want that to hang. We want it to be able to be, be smooth. We want to have control um, to um, to be able to give control throughout the network and, and be able to make it efficient without um, um, kind of issues with the traffic that's being delivered throughout the solution. We want to be able to improve a multicast load sharing. Again, that's one of the features that's part of 4.70, being able to aggregate multiple 10 gigs. If you're already dealing with AV now, a lot of the AV solutions are now moving into a 10 gig backbone network and be able to maximize that because they're now delivering you know, high-end HD, ultra HD content within, the, um, within that solution. And being able to use a multiple 10 gig uplink and be able to trunk them together so you have not just 10 gigs, but you can have, you know, link ag, let's say two ports, that becomes 20 gigs. You can have four uh, ports that are link ag together, that'll give you 40 gigs of traffic. So really that will improve the bottleneck if there are any within the, the server, uh, maybe the content delivery server to any of those screens within that network. So multicast sharing across that trunk port can be uh, automatically and evenly distributed, again, so it doesn't overload um, any particular port. So we can do that in a, a way that's not typically your, your traditional way of doing it, but we actually have uh, this functionality so that it helps to improve the AV over IP. 
we are utilizing the um, the switch port bandwidth better between the ports. So again, it all comes down to how do we improve how the traffic moves between screens, between ports, between servers, or between switches as you have um, multiple switches that are stacked together. A lot of these solutions that we're finding out that we're doing projects for working with some of our partners, they can have anywhere between 24, 48 screens type or port connections that they need. Um, a lot of them are ending up um, you know, in we see deployments in uh, restaurants. We will see, we've seen them in um, you know, public spaces, uh, anywhere where they can have a screen or advertisement, anything like that has um, AV over IP type content. We wanna be able to reduce the overhead as well within, um, within our switch network. So it doesn't cause um, kind of a flow of the traffic, any kind of pauses where the frame may pause. We can uh, take action. We can actually communicate with the receiver or the transceiver uh, in order to make the, the whole entire traffic move smoother. So network AV on, on the switches that support network AV mode with 4.70, you get to choice, you get a choice uh, when you first boot up the device, whether you want to put it in our standard mode, which is our layer two switched enhanced um, mode with all of the VLAN features and complex networks that you want to deploy as a standalone, or if you're using this in a network AV mode, you can actually switch it to the network AV mode that gives you uh, kind of a, a wizard, an instant, a view of the status of your switch, simplified functionality on menus on what to configure that is uh, specific to networking AV. You always have access to the other features as well, but just again, it is a, a more simplified view for you um, to be able to handle the network AV side. And again, it's one of those things where, again, if you are not, um, uh, familiar with all of the technical uh, networking features that are available in a standalone mode, but you're doing network AV, you can handle all of that within this um, within that AV mode. So it kind of provides a four step process to kind of simply um, to simplify the setup process of your AV deployments. So it asks a bunch of questions and it, and it goes through uh, kind of a walkthrough on how to configure the switch that's optimized for um, for uh, uh, AV or IP. Uh, it also has a dashboard within the device. So the dashboard for the AV is actually customized as well. It gives the pertinent information that you may need while you're using this kind of solution. So you can see the port, the system statuses of that, those port on the switches. You get um, the statuses of the network AV type so functions itself, POE, um, uh, things like that, and, and port usage, uh, what ports and traffic being being used. You also get access to some reporting if you actually use it within the Nebula cloud as well. So you can have um, IGMP and IPTV reporting information if you're doing IPTV. And that gives you what channels are being watched, what channels are being utilized um, and are, are most popular. And so the, the main switch that we've launched um, that have um, is moving towards the replacement of the GS twenty two tens is our new GS twenty two twenty series switches uh, provides ultra quiet cooling advanced a layer two multicast type capabilities advanced uh, functionalities in security for the switch uh, provides uplinks anywhere between two to six fiber uplinks. We have also 10 gig version of this, but the one of the main features of this is that the 2220 series um, with the 4.70 come with the Nebula platform. So you can actually put now a full layer through a layer two uh, switch that gives you standalone, gives you CLI management, and also now Nebula cloud management, um, being able to put this in the functionalities and the uh, higher security level functionalities of the 2200 series into the Nebula platform. And it gives you that network AV mode that's tailor-made for uh, AV over IP uh, functionality. Some other switches that do support it is our XGS 2210 series. Uh, probably by the end of the year or maybe next year, we'll have a, a XGS 2220 series that will come in and replace. Um, but again, this still works with the network AV mode. We've partnered with uh, companies like A10 and uh, A10 and uh, Wirestorm. Uh, Wirestorm is a big provider of um, network AV solutions and um, being able to provide uh, their solutions. They, if you work through Wirestorm, they actually will, uh, when you buy a um, Zycel switch through Wirestorm, it gets configured for whatever, um, you know, uh, AV 
AB over IP solution that there that you've purchased as well. So let's say you have you bought a package that is you know 10 screens and it comes with the the server as well. So that server and the 10 screens and the switch gets configured for you um, to to provide the optimal solution that they've um, certified our switches with. So really uh, working with them has been a, a great partnership in in delivering uh, AV over um, over IP. Uh, Paul asks, is the GS22 series, uh, 2220 on Nebula now? Yes, it is. So the thing with the 2220s, when you already have it with the 4.70, it comes loaded for free or it's included uh, with one year of Nebula Pro Pack. Uh, if you don't know much about Nebula, uh, we do have webinars that are specifically on the Nebula and why you know Nebula Pro and the feature sets that are available for that. So if you want to catch one of those, either the recording, you can find them on, on YouTube or you can find them um, in our partner page as well, in our webinar page. So just look at one of the, the older ones if you don't know what Nebula is. But yes, it is now available on, on Nebula. So when you buy the 2220 series now, it comes with that one year Nebula. So you have the option of choosing it to go right to Nebula if you so, if you so wish. So XGS 2220. The network AV mode supported products. It's our 2220 series, our XGS 2210 series um, with and without PoE. The 10 gig versions, the XGS 2220s, they have stackable uh, switches. So you can physically stack the, the product um, in a network perspective. But we do provide a wide range of switches. And so this is just kind of a, our, the breadth of our products, but the ones that support 4.70 is our GS 1920s uh, and um, series. This is our one of our most popular uh, switches for our partners today. This can be used both in standalone mode and in Nebula. So you can use Nebula with um, some of the features that you've also seen here um, today, including the auto PD. Uh, the XGS four, uh, uh, 1930 series are 10 gig of our web managed. The 4.70 function is coming in February. So it's later this month, we will have the, uh, the firmware available for you to download. All of these firmwares for the products that are supported are available um, when you go to the, the device product pages or through our FTP site as well. So you can grab uh, the specific ones for your product uh, and be able to load that in and take advantage of uh, the features the features today um so this is again is a same as our 1920 series but it is one with 10 gig uplinks they come with uh four sfp plus 10 gig ports that you can use either as link aggregation and because of the 4.70 when that's available you can add some additional uh, trunk support and also how you load balance the trunks better uh, specifically for uh, av or ip you can use them now and trunk them and link ag them together now as uh, as you may choose but uh, we found out that in, in larger deployments where you'd have more traffic in the network and being able to optimize that ac across the trunk uh, makes the the solution overall work better and smoother um, the XS 1930 series 4.70 is coming in the next quarter. Um, this is our 10 gig with 10 gig um, copper ports. It's all 10 gig ports. So this gives us PoE plus high power PoE, the ultra PoE solution. So you're doing um, any kind of those kinds of solutions. What we found out too is this is going to be big. Uh, we, we're seeing more and more um, solutions that are using uh, Wi Fi 6 for um, AV over IP. So using Wi-Fi instead of just using the wired connection to delivering the content. So this kind of opens up now a new uh, reach of those products. Before you had to wire them to the maybe the, the, the set-top boxes or to the receivers in order to get the connectivity. But now with the Wi-Fi solutions that are available, um, it's starting to move towards a more purely Wi-Fi using Wi-Fi 6. And so in order to power up those Wi-Fi 6 access point solutions, we have to use something with higher power. So the ultra PoE being able to support the 60 watt power functionality um, pairs up with our Wi-Fi 6 access points on the high end. Um, Paul asks, is this straight 10G or does it also do multi-gig? It also does multi-gig as well. So um, you're correct. On the copper ports, it will do 100 meg, 1 gig, 2.5 gig, 5 gig, and 10 gig. So it is capable of all those ports, um, all those speeds on any of these copper ports. Now you'll have to remember when you're using this switch uh, that depending on the cabling, if it's Cat Five E, if it's Six, if it's Cat Six, so different um, cabling um, provide the different speeds or maximum speeds 
on a certain distance. So you just have to kind of know, you can just uh, pretty much wiki, uh, like Wikipedia, find out that information and be able to, to find out. But typically if you're using like CAT 6C, you should be able to go the full 100 meters and be able to do 10 gig across the copper. Um, Joe asks, is the 2220 replacing the N, uh, NSW switch line? Yes. So um, the, actually the NSW, most people are moving either to the XGS 1920s um, or if they're needing some of the additional features that, that we've talked about in the 4.70, that's specifically for the 2220s, like let's say network AV and um, some of the security features that are part of uh, the 2200 series, then you can use the 2220. So you'll have two options. So instead of the NSW um, nebulous switch, you can go to the the flex switches, which is our 1920s, XS 1930s, XGS 1930s, and or you can move now to the GS2220 series. So now you have those, those options to move. And it, it really just depends on the feature set. Most of our customers who've never used a 2220 and only have used a 1920 is fine with just a 20, uh, 1920 um, because maybe some of the added features, they don't need the CLI access, they don't need some of these other functionalities uh, or security functionalities, then you know they, they can go with that switch. But the great thing is that the the 2210s includes one year of, of licensing for Nebula anyways. So that could add, be a value add already. Uh, whereas the 1900 series switches, you have to buy the licenses, the appropriate licenses to get that access to the Nebula cloud. The GS2220 series, we've covered that. So a full range of products here as well, being able to flex them into the Pro. The XGS2210 series also supports 4.70 now. It is our 10 gig uplink. So it's gigabit ports with and without PoE options and with 10 gig SFP uplinks um, up to 375 watts of power. Um, it supports stacking as well. So this is our stacking uh, capable switch. Our XS3800 is our, what I usually call our Frankenstein switch um, because it has eight combo ports with 10 gig, um, 10 gig and SFP plus ports. It has 16 SFP plus 10 gig ports. It has four multi gig capable anywhere between one gig to 10 gig um, ports. So it's a very a mixture. It's kind of a hybrid to, to help facilitate uplinks of different kind of different natures or different types that, that you may have in the network, but be able to provide an all capable 10 gig port with a giant, um, you know, throughput uh, capability on these ports. You can imagine all those ports are all 10 gig capable. So that's a lot of um, up, up and down speeds, non-blocking that we support within it. And also this is switch. It's our, it's one of, I think it's the first um, 10 gig like concentrator switch like this um, for a cloud solution. So in the Nebula cloud um, for, for us. So it's, it comes with now when you upgrade, if you already have an XS3800, if you happen to upgrade it, you technically have the choice if you'd like to, um, and, and to test it out and switch it over to the Nebula platform to get one year of Nebula Pro and activate that. Um, of course, I wouldn't advise for you to do it in a like a production um, device, um, but if you have another one, let's say a spare, you wanted to test it out to see how the Nebula functionality worked for it, you can enjoy and, and, and test that out yourself. But the, this is a, a layer three, layer two, layer three light type switch because it includes static routing, policy-based routing, VRRP, e, uh, ECMP support, and also Q and Q. So you have your VLAN inside of VLAN um, support uh, within this switch. Some additional layer three licenses um, are gonna be, uh, uh, sorry, layer three functions specifically will be available now in a, an upgrade license. So if you're looking to do full layer three with, with RIP, um, OSPF, DVMRP, those kinds of routing type features, um, there is an additional one-time license that basically unlocks the those functionalities within the switch. So uh, if you have that need, definitely contact uh, myself or your sales rep uh, if that's something you're looking into. Um, it supports physical stacking as well. You can see the numbers on the left there. If you have the ports stacked in, in, in the manner that of which uh, you, you're able to stack them, then you'll see the different stacking port number or stacking switches. So they actually function and manage as if they are one big giant switch. Uh, and you can stack them on obviously the 10 gig ports they, to do the stacking. So that's really um, you know some of the things that people haven't seen uh, because these typically are higher end, but we find that this is being deployed in 
uh, MDUs, and also this is also an approved switch for our um, a Wirestorm partnership as well, doing um, AV over IP, being able to use this as a concentrator and um, provide kind of the different kind of connectivities for it on a high level 10 gig switch. Also our XS 1930s as well. So um, XGS 4600s, mostly this is for kind of our service provider type companies who are looking to do full layer three, have options not only for gigabit copper um, delivery, but primarily uh, 24 or 48 port of uh, fiber connectivity if you're delivering gigabit to, um, to a prem. So we have customers who are delivering fiber to the home. So they have one of these in a CO cabinet somewhere that is then providing fiber connectivity all the way to the customer or to the building itself, providing gigabit uplinks as well as um, 10 gig, I'm sorry, 10, providing gigabit ports, but 10 gig uplink um, capable. So we have ranges from 24 port to 48 port solutions. These are kind of like on special order because a lot of them are only project-based type customers, but this also supports that 4.70 with um, those functionalities, being able to do the, the multi-uplink, um, the link ag, um, um, you know, type, um, type load balancing. But we have, you know, a lot of switches that are, are, are part of this solution and part of these feature sets. So if you have seen a switch here that you, you're not familiar with and want to find out more information, of course, uh, reach out to us, to our sales team, to, to myself if you need to, and we can help you with that. So this is some of the questions um, here for you there, Paul. Um, you know, I happen to have happen to have the slide. So some of the migrations of our NSW switch, if you are using our NSWs now, you can still go ahead and use them. There's no difference for you to use those NSW hardwares. If we have some still available and you still want to deploy because that's what you're used to using, you can, because they, they come with one year of um, pro pack as well, you can just still continue to buy them and use them. But of course, if you're looking to uh, migrate to them eventually, or if we're no longer have them in stock, then you can migrate to the GS2200 series, oh, sorry, the 2220 series models that have the network AV mode. So that's one benefit of it. You do get some better um, uh, fan uh, if, you're, if you're worried about our NSWs being very loud or you haven't deployed in places where um, sound or noise is a, a big issue, then the 2220 has ultra quiet cooling um, it has a variable fan that's designed to, to, to really make it run a lot uh, quieter. It has the network AV mode. It has triple management, being able to use it in, in CLI, in web managed, or in cloud managed mode. It includes a one-year pack, um, just like the NSW, so that won't change, but also includes features like auto PD recovery, being able to detect those devices and be able to reboot them and things like phones and cameras and access points. So be able to detect all that within that 2200 series because of that 4.70 uh, functionality. Um, the, if you already have a GS2210 today, um, you can just move on to the equivalent um, GS2220. And the main difference is again, quieter fan, network AV mode, um, being able to manage it in the cloud and standalone and CLI have the professional AB, uh, sorry, professional a nebula pack that's available in it and the auto PD recovery. So that's kind of the migration path that you're looking for or looking at for this kind of series. Now, there were a bunch of other features that I that I mentioned in the very beginning. I will provide, um, I will actually ask a marketing to send out the slide and email it to um, the, the list, the attendee list here so that you guys can get a copy of that. And that way you can see what the, the, sign of, the smaller features that are there. Again, some of them are just like small enhancements um, that are really helpful or maybe useful in certain scenarios. So we have, we have those that you can look at. But I think the main application is that it opens it up to having this AV over IP mode and being able to find this new maybe source. Maybe you're on the AV side and um, you're looking for a networking solution that might help um, to, to make it easier for you to deploy network AV for, for, for the applications that you're doing. Or maybe you're on the networking side of things and you're looking at a way, hey, this might be a new um, opportunity. I already know how to build networks. I already know how to secure it. I know how to do um, you know, proper IGMP, VLANs and um, bandwidth control. Um, now, how do I apply it to, um, to, the, to, to the network AV solution side? And being able to partner with um, someone like Wirestorm um, and be able to, to, 
to get product from them that's familiar to you in like the the um or the Zycel switches there to there and be able to know that when you buy their solutions that those get configured and you're able to manage them and also then just have to learn the um the delivery system of that network av solution that wirestorm provides so really that's a great partnership being able to work and get your partners our partners in with that and um um be able to do that so some people were asking if they have sound lose sound but others were saying that they did have sound so it just could be a network thing. Hopefully, it's just not my network thing. Um, so hopefully, it will get better. <laughs> so if you have any questions, if they're not like sound issues or anything like that, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, you can ask them now. Or if you can't think of them, you can email me with your comments or questions at try at, um, at zycel.com. So feel free to send me a, a message email there. Um, and um, let me know of your suggestions, your thoughts. Um, next week, we have a webinar on security, on how to secure your network and, and solutions that are available there as well. So uh, feel free to jump into to that next week. Uh, if there are no questions, um, we just want to make sure that you get to use Network AV now and be able to provide high quality, low latency video distribution that's just simple to use because of Zycel's solutions. So looking forward to, to working you, with you as a partner. If you're not, if you are a, already a Zycel partner, thank you very much. And looking forward to working with you. Um, feel free to reach out to your sales rep. Um, you have a dedicated sales rep that is there to help you uh, answer any questions. Um, again, if you're looking at how this solution could work for you, or maybe this is an opportunity uh, to, to, to learn more uh, about the solution, uh, definitely take advantage of that. We'll, we'll be glad to talk to you about how you can use your expertise in delivering into this market. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a happy rest of your Tuesday. Stay safe. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time, take care. Thank you for being our networking ally.